Okay, back here for part two of the M.A. Ford factory board unicamera sharpening fixture for single whip counter sinks. Okay, I got it in here. We're ready to go. Let's have a look. I want to thank everybody that uh, that bought uh, stuff from uh, Rob. I, I think you'll all be happy with everything. And I even sold my old uh, Monarch 10 E lathe. I only need one. And somebody got a good deal on that. So it's been a pretty successful thing, I think. Now, let's have a look here. I want to thank Ron, uh, Ron and Carla. And then a Corey and the Blade, <laughs> Warren Jones and everybody yeah, that has uh, helped along here. Okay, now I'm going to crank this over and we're going to have a look. In exciting part one, <laughs> we mounted the single flute countersink with the notch, okay, lined up with the edge. And we learned that from the instructions that if you put the edge towards negative, you get less clearance, which might be better for some materials if you experience uh, chatter. So, okay, we're going to put that in the genuine Ford fixture. Now, they say to grind on this side of the grinding wheel, Okay, rotate clockwise, which is counterclockwise here, and I'll have the wheel going in this direction. Everything they describe, uh, I've got set up here. Okay, so here we go. Now, your fingers are close. i got to get you in a better spot. Let's try this so you can see around my fingers. There we go. I think that'll work. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate it and and feed it in until we get contact. I got it fairly close. There we go. Starting to spark. Okay, I'm feeding it in about a thousandth of a turn, uh, a turn here, so maybe a couple. We're starting to get close to grinding it. You see what I mean? You got your fingers so close there. And it'd be more hazardous on this side, so you can, you really could bark your knuckles. Now we're grinding away from the edge. And, uh, you know, I might be tempted to grind into the edge uh, by reversing the wheel and reversing the direction here for the last pass. I'll, I'll try that later. I'm going to inspect the edges with a microscope. And we're still going, and we've been going for uh, not quite two, uh, two minutes. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep feeding it in. I'll get my hand to break right here and I'll get you a little closer. And you can actually see the edge. Here we go again. See if we can get it down. <laughs> Into a two and a half minutes. Kind of curious, you know, how long does it take to drop in one of these things? And it's tricky. <laughs> Your hand gets a little bit tired. This one looks pretty dull. It looks like someone might have tried to hand trap it a little bit.
Well, it's just on point there, yeah. Gonna keep feeding it in a little bit. We'll spark it out a little bit here and work it out. Let's get a second hand on there. We are in three minutes on grinding this. So far. I think we're getting pretty darn close to it. I'll turn the back it up slightly. About 5,000. I'm going to crank it over. I'm safe to get it out of there. That's a pit. Oh, it's hot. Okay, hold on. It's a hot one. <laughs> Of course it's hot. How are we looking? Get the light on it. Now what I forgot to do is I should have took a little uh, scotch bright or something and polished this front edge. But it's fine anyway. It's got a burr from grinding away from the edge. So it'd be best to take a small stone and take that burr off before you use it because otherwise it'll tear the edge a little bit. So you want to be sure and stone that burr off. But I think that does a pretty good job. Why not? Didn't have quite have it in the camera here. Let me be sure to have it in there. I'm going to take and dust it just a little bit. Hold on. Throw it back over. Oh, you can't stop. Okay. Going to feed her in now. I have fed this in 55 thousandths here. To sharpen it. And it looks to me like you can keep going and keep going on this thing. I think it's relatively safe doing this, but I think you can see the problem doing it on the other side of the wheel. Okay. This just feels like it's still going a little bit. Try and get a little bit of action. You kind of need a break after doing one. Okay. So get that way. Move it all over. Yeah, that's a bit better finish, see. Oh, that's nice. Really, really nice. Okay. So, to recap, the body's in here. You use these sleeves. This one's done. We'll go ahead and take it apart. Crank it all the way out. We can pull the cutter out. And then um, the, uh, this comes off the uh, sleeve. And again, when you line the, uh, this edge up to that notch, you can reduce the clearance by 
having to edge more towards uh, the negative or increase the clearance more towards the positive. And you know, that's a lot of control, I think. Let me take this loose. Oh, I'm worn out. I'm gonna have to take a coffee break. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, this is not a real production type thing, but uh, I don't think this is manufactured any longer. And I think the reason Rob thought so too was uh, the proximity of uh, your hands to this. Well, I'll have a look around here. I got a lot to clean up. I got this stack of cutters from uh, Rob, and uh, I was just checking to see the height of them. And uh, they're all different heights. <laughs> and I'm trying to pair some, uh, pair some up. We'll see what, see what happens there. I don't know, the quarter inch cutters there. Now over here, I'll kick this off. That's a good, that's a good unit there. And it's good to shut the power off to it. Otherwise, if you push the buttons on the machine, they'll single phase, they'll buzz. And uh, if you had uh, like an old time switch, like on the cutter grinder here, like that, if, you, if uh, the phase converter was not on and uh, it would uh, single phase the motor and could possibly burn it up if it's set that long. You know, the motor buzzes. Well, anyway, I'll see you guys later.